gotta flop Our mind's about to pop But enough of that noise Time for the B-roll, boys! Greetings out there, B-rollers. Yeah, that's why I'm calling them now. <laughs> it's me, it's your boy, Wes, and joining me here today is... Justin. And also, I am your boy, Harlan. <laughs> that, was, that was transcendent. Could that, have, could that have been any whiter? Um, yes. Oh. So I'm proud of that. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> Today we're going to make some <laughs> slight changes to the format, because we looked back at our first three episodes, you know what, um... These suck well, shit. I was going to say they're a 10 out of 10, but yes. <laughs> Today we're going to shoot for 11. Um, we've already taken turns with our picks, we didn't really, like, announce that, but I picked Spider-Man 3, Justin picked Jupiter's Ascending, and Harlan's Wheel of Doom <laughs> chose After Earth. Um, do you have an official name for the Wheel of Doom yet? Uh, no I don't. Well, all right wheel. we should uh, work on that <laughs> but um so yeah we decided to take it somewhat seriously so whoever picks will basically be the host and um we'll just you know grab you by the dick or pussy or whatever you have and we don't discriminate we'll just lead you through this journey with us you know whoever you are you're one of the boys today as god <laughs> just, intended just remember that um but that leads to my next pick which was snake eyes uh this is a crime thriller I, I use that. <laughs> hey, I was use thrilled. That loosely. <laughs> <laughs> I was very thrilled. Um, <laughs> this was directed by Brian De Palma. Same guy directed, you know, Scarface, Untouchables, Mission Impossible, good movies. <laughs> objectively. <laughs> Can't win them all. <laughs> so, um, Brian teamed up with Mission Impossible writer David Cope to write Snake Eyes. And, if you guys remember from our pilot... He wrote the first Spider-Man movie. Whoa! Oh, it's all come, coming full circle. It, it's it reincorporation, did, and like a, this movie is, because it's smart. <laughs> I somehow subconsciously connected the two most opposite movies I could think of. Um, <laughs> but anyway, no, did, so, you, you didn't see a Macho Man Randy Savage's cameo in the beginning? That's a tie-in to his bone saw character in Spider-Man. Oh my god. Oh fuck, dude. Oh my god. Bone saws ready! <laughs> You're going nowhere! Got you for three minutes of playtime! I really wish the boxer in uh, Snake Eyes was Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> I'm just picturing that now, and it's just so much better. Um, but <laughs> I think the, the first three movies I mentioned have one very special thing about them, is that Nick Cage is not in them. And then my... <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that might have helped a little bit um but that being said uh let's 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 break into this let's get into the the creamy middles here Ooh, ooh, ooh. so what, what's the plot what happens first uh well uh the movie starts what <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so um we're we're in there with a boxing match a bunch of heavyweights fighting in the ring and nick cage just busts in he's immediately an asshole and the promoter is there, he's taking bets, and basically Nick Cage just fucking sucks, but he has luxurious chest hair. Are you kidding? <laughs> Nick Cage is, like, the most charismatic person ever in this. Like, I have to say, the first 15 minutes of this, I kind of loved. I, I yeah, was, it was uh, really fun. I, I, I was watching this, and I was like, why did we... Why did Wes pick this movie for the podcast? Like, this seems like a like a decent movie. For, for the mean, first, like, 15 minutes or so, and then it kind of lost me, and I was like, oh, okay. Well, the second decent, they started like, actually decent? cutting. Yeah. <laughs> decent, like, decent or just entertaining? Because Nick Cage comes in at an 11 immediately, and that is great, but is it objectively, like, Oscar-worthy? <laughs> I don't oh, know. Oh, no, this isn't, like, Schindler's List. I'm just saying that it's, uh, it's entertaining, it's fun. Like, yes, he's... <laughs> He's maximum asshole factor here, and I love it. And it's also like one long uncut shot, and around the time that they start cutting, is where like normal cutting, I guess, is where it kind of starts to lose me a tiny bit. But I'm glad that there wasn't just a long uncut shot of Nick Cage because I don't need him like 
shit fitting for well, that's what I wanted. <laughs> hour 38 yeah and that that just kind of brings up one of the first things that you notice immediately there's like no consistency with the cinematography whatsoever it's like really the, distracting there's like yeah. 13 for 13 minutes including i guess the opening credits and all that there's like one consecutive shot through the whole movie and you're like oh this this could be cool and then it's just like no nah, you know what never mind <laughs> we're just gonna completely switch gears well yeah like part of what i was talking about with uh you know my enjoyment of the movie in, in the first 15 minutes or so is that yeah from a, from like a technical perspective yeah that 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 continuous shot was was you know it, it was it was interesting um and also you know nick cage was just like he got to he was just being an asshole and it was just fun to watch nick cage be an asshole you know because he, he plays the part really well um so it was, it, it was enjoyable enough just for those two things alone and then you know after that point you know then the camera starts actually using cuts and nick cage uh starts uh his redemption arc <laughs> <laughs> yeah because he's like a shitty beat cop yeah it's like it's like really a kind of dirty cop <laughs> like you don't know if like even after watching the whole thing i don't know if like the nick cage in the beginning was supposed to be an act or not because it's not like he was like infiltrating it or anything you just think man this guy's the biggest douchebag on earth <laughs> yeah but in <laughs> a very enjoyable way in a very very enjoyable way i wish it was like that through the whole movie but yeah as soon as the one shot thing stops it's like his character completely changes. It's just so kinda... the the only thing that I wrote down for this movie, I only took one note, and I said, <laughs> uh, "I don't know what to make of Nick Cage as an actor." Yeah, he's all over the place. Like in yeah, general, like, or just in this? Uh, in general, but but in in this too. Cause, yeah, like <laughs> especially at at the beginning, like it seemed like he was really like not taking it seriously and just having a good time with it. And then, yeah, all of a sudden he, you know, started, felt like he was more giving it actual effort. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to make of it. There's definitely a gear switch there. For um, sure. But yeah, so after all that, it like, really doesn't matter. It's just like 15 minutes of Nick Cage just being a fucking prick in the best way possible. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're at a boxing match. Um, the movie actually starts off pretty quick, which is one of the better things about it, I guess. So they're at the boxing ring, they're watching a boxing match, and um, he comes up to his best friend, he goes to his seat, and his best friend's Lieutenant Dan, which I love. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan's great. I don't even care to know his real name. He'll be... <laughs> 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 He'll always be <laughs> Lieutenant Dan to me. Um, you know, so they're, they're talking, and uh, Lieutenant Dan spots this, uh, <laughs> this uh, buxom redhead across the, the alleyway there. Yeah. And he's like, that's check yeah. She's not really watching the fight. She, she's alone. That's, 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 that's kind of weird. Are you looking at me, Neo? Or are you looking at the woman in the red dress? He was definitely <laughs> looking at the woman in the red dress, my friend. But um, he follows her out. Nick Cage is sitting there watching the fight. Um, he's bummed because he threw like three grand down on this fight. Um, and then, boom, the guy behind him gets shot. And then that's when the... The one-shot sequence ends, and that's where Nick Cage decides, you know what, I'm going to try to act now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try to make this an actual movie now. Because, yeah, it starts out so fun and so just over-the-top and ridiculous, and then it kind of just devolves into this, like, CSI crime drama by the end. And I'm yeah, like, like, man, pretty, I'm not pretty... watching a Nick Cage movie for that. I don't care. Yeah, it, it becomes pretty generic. Like, there, there's, there's, there's nothing really too remarkable about it, you know? Like, either way. It's, it's just kind of there. It's like a functional movie. It's just, I guess. I mean, now I will say that it was kind of hard to follow what was going on. But by the end of it, I was just kind of like, eh, it's, it's fine, I guess. There's nothing distinctly horrible about it. Yeah. Outside of it's... sometimes Nick Cage overacts a little bit and it's not great, but it's not like Wicker Man bad. I don't know, that's that's kind of what makes it enjoyable for me. Like, I wish he would just fucking fully lean into it. Because that's when, when Cage is at his best for me. Yeah, same. If he was the Nick Cage he was in the first ten, ten minutes of the movie throughout the entire thing... Oh, man. I would've, I would've, this would have been the best movie ever. Oh, I would have yeah. I would have really enjoyed this movie it was just, if it was just that through the whole movie. Totally. Uh, I know. It's just really disappointing. Um, but, you know... So <laughs> the dude gets shot. You find out he's a senator, and this is when just this the entire he's a secretary. Oh yeah, sorry, secretary of something. No, 
Is he secretary <laughs> of like defense or something? Yeah, I think so. Why is that guy at a boxing match? He likes boxing, just Well, they explain they explain that later. God, am I the only one that paid attention? You fucking well, in You're the you're the glue. Uh, sorry, that I holds got... this incoherent mess together. No, <laughs> so it, it's we it's appreciate that. It's it's revealed later, so we'll get to that. Why he was there? Oh yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh yeah. Sorry, um, I so, guess I lost the lore in that. Part. Um, and this is exciting because Justin and I are gonna find out too, and we just we just watch. <laughs> <laughs> My brain just shit it out in like a second. It's a double whammy. I mean, it's not really anything crazy. <laughs> so he goes, he follows after Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan's like a decorated general. And for some reason, he calls in. And he's like, hey. Why isn't he General Dan then? He's General Dan. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's like. <laughs> general Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> Lieutenant's his first name. <laughs> first Private General Lieutenant Dan comes in. <laughs> the third. And um, so he's like, oh, man, I'm going to get court-martialed for this. I walked up, I followed this redhead, I tried to F her, and, <laughs> and you know, shit went down, I left my post, um, and Nick Cage, he turns into fucking super cop, like, he's got his shit <laughs> together, he's like, okay, this is gonna be your story, I've done this a thousand times, I'm a piece of shit, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, he reminds it... me of Tyler Perry and Gone Girl, he's just, like, so savvy <laughs> over this. <laughs> It's it's established at this uh, earlier in the movie um, that he has a wife and and a child, uh, who he again he's he's a piece of shit. So he he cheats on his wife and hell yeah he does. Yeah, he's just he's just with bitches all the time, yo. <laughs> it really shows because he has a golden flip phone, which <laughs> which may be the greatest thing I've ever seen. Solid gold. And I think, he, correct me if I'm wrong, does he not have a snakeskin jacket? Ooh. I did not uh, notice the texture. I, I couldn't tell if it was actually eyes? snakeskin, but it was like... It was like something like that. It was yeah. more like yeah, buttercream some... croc skin. It was yeah, some he, sort of reptilian. He looks like hide. Saul Goodman. <laughs> he has like a that, that kind of cheap car salesman piece of shit type to him. Oh, and while Lieutenant Dan is explaining what happened like they keep going into these pov shots yeah that, that was pro- that was probably the weirdest thing about the movie for me yeah it's like the shittiest part or it's like the shittiest possible version of like reservoir dogs kind of yeah where they keep re- uh, revisiting like different parts of the plot and yeah you get like I, I wish that this movie was trashier than it was or like trashier in a way that it didn't take itself as seriously because like you get this part where he's just looking at this girl's tits and then he shoots a guy through the wall. <laughs> and I was yeah. just like, okay, if this was the whole movie, then now we're talking, but I don't need it to be CSI by the end. Exactly. And I mean, technically this movie's a crime thriller, but this is when it really just starts to it's take bit, it up the ass. Because... Crime <laughs> snoozer, Jesus Christ. I know. And like, okay, so we're, we got to where, you know, he goes to Calm's Dan, he's like, I'm going to get you out of this. And somehow this is like half an hour in already and nothing has happened. And... Uh, <laughs> But um, after that, it's just it's just like a stream of shit happening. There's like 50 camera angles of this boxing match. Everybody's telling their own side of the story. It's just all over the fucking place. So I guess we're going to try to keep this as, as grounded as possible. Mainly Harlan, because uh, you actually seem to have some wherewithal of what's going on. Oh, no. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, gotcha. I, I, okay. It was just those two details that we, that we discussed. <laughs> That's all I got. This I, mean, movie, like, I remember uh, the general outline of the movie. It just it seems really convoluted and like just, uh, things were getting lost on me. Yeah, it's not to mention yet. Yeah, it did just kind of get kind of boring, and I was kind of like, uh, all right, I, yeah, I, I get so it. Yeah, zoning like, out through a couple parts. I, I get it. Nick Nick Cage doesn't want to be a, a bad guy anymore. He just wants to he wants to have his little redemption arc. That's cool. He's lived the first thirty five years of his life being a prick, and now he's like, you know what? Uh, it's not for me. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. He's like, y- you ever have sex with one woman for 20 years? It's not natural, man. I can't do it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the next 20 minutes are, you know, what they said, just uncomfortably weird, like, POV first-person shots. Yeah, they're so and... short. Like, it makes you wonder, like, what the point is. Like, like I remember one one specifically was, like, a POV shot of, of uh, Lieutenant Dan walking towards the bathroom. I was like, fucking why? <laughs> like, that's not interesting in any fucking way. He's just walking towards the bathroom. 
Oh yeah, like um, that's when he was recanting his tale, um, the, his first oh, yes, story of, of, of his happened. of his maiden. He, yeah, he was following his maiden, and um, who's like never mentioned again ever. And he hears he hears well, she's mentioned sh- again. No, that's that's because we that was that was the twist. We find out that she never existed. Well, wasn't the like one of the original like footage of him? Oh wait, no, the um, the spy kid mom saw her. Because <laughs> it had a POV shot of her looking down at Nick Cage, and he walked over to the redhead, so she was at least real for him to get up and follow her away. Yeah, she she was but like she everything was real. else was fake. Okay, so th- this is something I was gonna get into later. It's it's revealed. Okay, so like like we said, he he follows this this hot redheaded girl uh, out out of the uh, the uh, fighting arena um, up the stairs, and he's he's like allegedly he's in his version of the story he's like you know asking to see her ticket because you know he's he's gotta be on top of shit tonight and you know he, he says that he uh got distracted and he missed his post because he was staring at her tits for too long and then you know dude got shot and shit went down and then we find out later that like we see the camera on him exactly when he said that that took place and the woman wasn't there at all so it's like he he made up, I guess, that that he was staring at her tits at all, but I guess she was real, and it's like I, I guess that's just convenient that she happened to walk up there at a time that was convenient for him to follow her up there right next to where he was supposed to be for his plan to work. His logic to Nick Cage is kind of shaky in that he was like, "Well, I saw this woman looking at me, and I thought that was pretty fucking weird because women never look at me, so I had to go over to her and ask what the fuck was up." And it's like, really? That's why you left your security post? Is because this girl was giving you fuck eyes? Like, that's, yeah. that's weird. For a decorated General Dan <laughs> that he was. <laughs> For Supreme <laughs> Overlord but, Dan. And that's another thing. Like, at, at the end, where, where he claims he was staring at her tits, the sniper that shot the, uh, the Secretary of Defense was just happened to be behind the wall where he was standing and he just yeah, poked four bullet holes in the wall and he just fell over like he could have like he was basically shooting into the crowd yeah like, i was like, thinking that too because because when we very first the very first time we saw that i was like what the fuck is he shooting at and then, and then the guy falls out and i'm like wait how did he know that he was there like, like at that exact point, like he makes a perfect line with three or four bullet holes, and he just falls forward. Yeah, and I, I don't know, maybe I missed something, but I don't know how he could see or tell that that guy was on the other side of that wall. I well, think that's I how get good in there. he is. He's so. Or, I, I mean, I, I guess that was just part of the conspiracy is that he knew exactly where he would be. I don't know. They're in the and he, like his plan was to kill him the whole time. Dun dun dun. Because <laughs> <laughs> after he leaves. He like he's talking to his two cronies in the alleyway, and you find out that General Dan's in on this whole thing. Oh and, shit! And yeah, he's a double instantly, crosser. Mind is fucking blown. I don't know. Did, were you guys kind of kind of like, was that reveal not really working for you? Because because when that happened, I was kind of like, what, huh? That oh, was the first okay. time I got really confused while watching this. I was kind of yeah, like, like oh. Yeah, my first thought was like, if he's a double crosser, then why did he kill the guy to begin with? But I guess like maybe I have to look at did the other guy know that he was going to be killed. Uh, yeah, again, to, like I, offer I, himself I, up to die. Yeah, I guess this is just part of, of of the conspiracy, is what the writers would say. But uh, yeah, I don't know. The way that that reveal was handled was, I don't know, kind of yeah. I guess if all three of us were kind of like, huh, then I guess that says something about the quality of the reveal. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, after that, Nick Cage decides to go super detective mode again. He's all over this fucking boxing arena and the stands. And yeah, he, why? He's going to figure this that? shit out for some reason. He <laughs> just like, like Sherlock. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like talking to the booth nerd, the AV nerd up top. He's like, I need to see all your tapes, bro. And he pulls out Alien Resurrection. He's like, No, no, not that. And then, <laughs> and then. <laughs> And so, like, he's looking at the tapes, and, you know, it's a boxing match. There's 50 different camera angles. That's how they always are. They're just everywhere. You can see everything. He notices that the uh, the boxer, I don't remember his name at all. Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln, okay. Uh, Lincoln Park, the boxer. <laughs> <laughs> he took a dive. There was a ghost punch. And um, so Nicolas Cage is like, oh, okay. Okay, Lincoln. Okay. Well, here's my question then. If this giant conspiracy is happening, 
then why did they do this at a boxing match specifically, in a place where there are 500 different cameras? Like, a sporting event seems like one of the worst places to do something like that. Like, why not a speech? Exactly. Well, I guess yeah, like a yeah, speech yeah. that he's attending. That. Why does it have to be a boxing match? Yeah, I understand that this isn't necessarily a, a good criticism of, of a story, but yeah, if, if you did put this in any other event, like, yeah, it wouldn't really work. Well, that being said, we do find out later that Lieutenant Dan was betting on the fact that Nick Cage was such a piece of shit that he could just pay him off anyway, so they may have not even cared. Even though like, there's just... not going to be any other cops? There's no other detectives, like, at all? Well, and, and aside from that, he doesn't even try to pay off Nick Cage until the end of the movie. Like, he lets him, like, look into the shit and investigate and, un until, like, he finds out that he's in on it. It's like, you yeah, could have just paid him off in the another... beginning before before he got invested and developed an, an, an affection for this for this mistress. For Spy Kid's mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, Lieutenant Dan gets him a ticket to sit ne sits next to him, so he's, like, all pop pumped on that. And that's one of the biggest complaints of the movie is that Nick Cage is established to be a fucking scumbag, a corrupt cop. So there's really no reason that they couldn't have just paid him off from the beginning. He, you know, they all could have rode off into the sunset and this would have just been like a crime movie where everybody wins. But <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's supposed to be like the redeeming arc of it is, yeah, you establish him as a piece of shit by the end. Like maybe that's his line is like, oh, there's like people being killed. And that's that's not cool. I don't like that. Well, I think I think what he says uh, later on in the movie is that he's never like, He's like, I never kill anyone, and then he, and then he realizes like, I do. I just do it indirectly, and then he and he says something about how he like you know he saw the face of the person that would have died, and he's like, well now I can't let it happen. I don't know, but it felt like a very flimsy motivation for the character. You know, it was it was just like I don't really understand why Nick Cage is is you know has been a corrupt cop for so long and all of a sudden he gives a shit about doing the right thing and, like, and you know he doesn't he doesn't really explain that until the end of the movie and i'm like you probably should have explained that to me much sooner definitely <laughs> um so at the center of all this we have spy kids mom so <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea what her name is we've got a yeah we've got spy kids alum carla <laughs> gugino carla gugino I didn't need to know her name. <laughs> <laughs> Again, General Dan, like Spike I said, mom, this is Spike mom. <laughs> as it is written in the holy text. Yeah, she, she was mom. credited in this movie as Spy Kids Mom yeah. before the, before Spy Kids came out. <laughs> I about to say I say Spy Kids alum, and that was like several. It was like what five years before Spy Kids. Yeah, yeah, something uh, like that. Spy Kids one came out in ninety nine. Or 2001, was, maybe? I think it was 01. The yeah, that would have been three out. years later. Still hot, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she did look uh, surprisingly attractive in this movie. But, um, so, uh, surprisingly, Lieutenant General... she's a pretty lady. Yeah, that's really insensitive of you, Harlan. I'm, I can't even <laughs> believe it right now. I don't know, man. Uh, call, call me what you will, but I just uh, never, uh, I never watched Spy Kids, and I was like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, Spy Kids mom. <laughs> You so, don't have to be jerking <laughs> off to her to think that she's a nice-looking woman. <laughs> all right, different fair point. taste, Harlan. I don't know, man. For for me, it's 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 all or nothing. So, um, <laughs> Private First Class General Corporal Space Force Dan, as he's getting up to uh, <laughs> Spartan One One Seven Dan. Um, so, in the process of him going to check on the redhead. Um, Spy Kid's mom slinks in in front of the senator. She like says something to him that we're not really exactly sure what's going on just yet. And then when the senator's shot, a bullet, a second bullet grazes her arm, and this begins like the the opus of the Spy Kid's mom. And because uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a good tale. Spy Kid's mom always comes out on top. <laughs> All always. Um, God, this ugh. is stupid. <laughs> it is. She gets shot, and we talked about he, he talks to Lincoln, and he's looking at all the tapes, and then they chase Spy Kid's mom upstairs, where she's trying to hide out with that fat Jonah Hill. Or that, well, that's redundant. Oh, but. yeah, so yeah, she's, okay, so. <laughs> no, he's not fat anymore, it's, yeah. you do have to clarify. <laughs> so You have to Spike... look at Grandma's boy Jonah Hill. 
So yeah, Spy Kid's mom, she basically just bolts immediately, and she was wearing a fake wig this whole time. Um, in the boxing ring, there's this casino. She goes out, and she just picks, like, the fattest, nerdiest guy that will definitely go to her hotel room right now. <laughs> and so uh, he takes her to the hotel room, and they're hiding out while Nick Cage is, like, stomping around this hotel. Where's Spy Kid's mom? I need to find <laughs> Spy Kid's mom. That's what he says, right? <laughs> <laughs> just just straight up acting a fool and uh lieutenant dan's behind the scenes he finds out about spy kid's mom they're running all over the hotel and then just throughout this whole thing you get more long unnecessary long cuts because this thing switches from like three different cinematic you know shots basically yeah we've it's got like, like wes anderson <laughs> shit going on like a, over top like a bird's eye view going over several different hotel rooms and uh, i'm sorry weird. that just did not work for me at all yeah i normally was... love shit like that but it was just so out of place in such a bland exactly. movie otherwise when Spice and, yeah, it's, it's mom, distracting it was, yeah, it was yeah. really fucking obnoxious especially because like what was the point of that it was like i mean how long would you say that 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 particular scene was oh, you yeah, know when, where um, it, it, she it pans takes across to the or he takes her to his hotel room and then once they enter the room, it starts this, like, long overhead shot, like, straight top-down shot going over, like, six hotel rooms. Just yeah, to just get showing to various people doing shit. And then it just shows her, like, cleaning the blood off of her jacket and then putting on another shirt. And it's like, that was, like, two minutes for that for that <laughs> yeah and then it she was comes, such a waste of time she comes out and the guy's like hey can i see your feet or what she's <laughs> like no i'm just trying to hide out and he's like what is this a fucking bus stop no i want to get my dick shocked <laughs> oh, yeah. and then afterwards he's like fuck this and he slips his wedding ring back on he's like you know what i'm I happily love my married wife. i had to say that was funny like, that worked for that. me that was pretty good yeah i mean it's, it's elements like that you know where people are just like so comedically asshole-ish <laughs> You know, and then he's, enjoyable. he goes outside and he's like, this hotel room fucking sucks. I was writing a heartfelt letter to my wife and then this harlot came in and tried to suck my dick. <laughs> yeah, he like goes to like tell on her to Lieutenant Dan. He's like, oh, Lieutenant Dan, help. <laughs> oh, wait, but, but before that, Nick Cage busts in there because he finds oh, yeah. out where she went. And then he's like, get out of here, fucking Melvin. And he just like yanks <laughs> him out of the hotel room. He's like, hey, it's my room. Wait a minute. Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> Let me and, get my rocks off, goddammit. And then, like, he's bitching about it to himself, and Lieutenant Dan over here is like, hey, what, what's going on over there? He's like, oh, there's some fucking asshole in my room. And then... The <laughs> I was praying to Christ, and then this harlot and Nicolas Cage busted in my room. <laughs> to tempt me with sin. I think she was in Spy Kids. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I think she was in it. I think she's is, going to be in a movie called. Is Spike. it that weird Robert Rodriguez film from three years from now? Fuck that. <laughs> Jesus. Um. <laughs> so, uh, Lieutenant Dan gets to the room. Nicholas Cage and Spy Kid's mom already bolted, and then so they, she takes him to the stairwell, and he's gonna he's gonna find out what what the flip is going on, right? Um, and he just turns into a straight up just asshole again. She tells him the story. And he's like, no, no, not my buddy, Dan. <laughs> he's a saint. He literally says he's the coolest dude on earth. <laughs> <laughs> he says that he's like, <laughs> he's a bro. I wish you hadn't told me because now I have to know. Oh yeah. He just kept screaming that as he's smoking. He's like, God, why'd you have to tell me? Yeah, that's probably, like, the most Nick Cage scene in the movie. Is, is when he just starts, like, losing his shit at, at her for telling him what happened. Not at the beginning, where he's, like, screaming. He's like, Lincoln, yeah! Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tie. <laughs> uh. Best moments of the movie. It is the best moments of the movie. That This is primo Nick Cage being Nick Cage. Like, it's it's scenes like that that really really drive it home yeah um all right so he just he takes her to this panic room that's just somewhere within the the boxing arena just a padded <laughs> vault for no reason it's like here just chilling here for the rest of the movie we're gonna forget about you for a while <laughs> <laughs> which it had like okay so he locks her in from outside the room which makes sense but then 
later on we see that it has like a numbered padlock on the inside too mm-hmm. like what, what how does that work what's the point of that i noticed that I was... it's, got, it's got like a manual lock on the outside but then on the inside it's got a numbered padlock i feel like it'd be the excessive. opposite but yeah all right whatever yeah, yeah we can do that yeah, that's fine <laughs> that's how doors work <laughs> So we pretty much just, after that, it's, I guess for like the next 10, 20 minutes, it's just constantly just a stream of like random people's flashbacks, um, first person POV shots that make you think, is this a Sega CD cinematic? Oh, it really <laughs> did look like that. <laughs> That's some <Metro> vibes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much like, it would just, like every 15 minutes, this movie would just switch gears. It's like, either it's normal or either they're going for some weird, super long POV shot of, like, a first-person view. Um, where people are, like, literally talking at the camera. There was one scene where, like, you think that it's a person because people are talking to him. And then, like, this is this one still shot as well. Like, and then the guys come out. Or he's following a guy going into the room. And you think, okay, I guess he's just going to sit out there and chill. Then the guys come back out of the room. And then they just don't even pretend that he's there anymore. So it's like this movie's shots just make it so incoherent because it's like it's, it doesn't know what it wants to be. Yeah, it's just it kind just of changes mid shot like that, like you, like you were saying with um, what's his name, the boxer Lincoln, where we've got his POV shot and the yeah, the actors are talking to the camera and then halfway through he's just in the frame and it becomes third person. Now the camera is this omniscient observer, and it's just so all over. Like I normally love like different kinds of cinematography and things that are visually interesting but it's just so distracting yeah and i yeah, it didn't yeah. work for me at all yeah i i agree it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was it was weirdly obnoxious and then it would just switch on and off between these really long one shots as well that would last like two three minutes just for seemingly no reason <laughs> And then it would combine the two sometimes where it's like the weird pov shots while also being a super long scene like it's like they were trying to to get into video game territory, but then not. I don't know. It's just weird. It's like doing his worst David Fincher impression. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's like he's trying to copy all these other people. But um, so after all this, all these different stories of, oh, no, this happened, this happened, whatever. It doesn't even matter. We all barely remember it anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Dan comes out and um, he like the boxers on his side. Like, after, like, um, what was it, like a five, ten minute long conversation, Lieutenant Dan and Nick Cage finally meet up <laughs> oh, in, yeah. the, in the AV dude's <laughs> lair. Like, his little bat cave, there's Cheetos and Mountain Dew all over the place. <laughs> and he's throwing away his copy of Alien Resurrection because he was already embarrassed. And, <laughs> and then, <laughs> It's and a then, good fucking movie, alright? <laughs> so, like, they're talking in the AV room because Nick Cage, that he basically has all the tapes... Um, oh yeah, the, the AV guy shows him. Oh, I know. I had a hidden camera. I just got this thing. It's yeah, like a, a good year, a good year blimp, <laughs> on top of the boxing ring that j- is basically just for crowd shots. Um, but then, like this captures everything. It shows Lieutenant Dan lied about the redhead. Um, he basically was like waiting for the guy to shoot, and then he. That's when he shot him through the wall. Um, it shot. It showed this the secretary getting shot. And it basically showed that um, they were trying to kill Spy Kid's mom, but they missed and just kind of grazed her arm instead. It pretty much shows everything is the most damning thing, and it all comes down to that. Um, so they're having this big, long conversation. She's like, oh, oh yeah, man. I, you know, I just assumed I could buy you this whole time. I don't know why I never mentioned this before now, but, you know. What I a weird misunderstanding. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was going to go smooth, you know. <laughs> probably should have mentioned this sooner, and you probably would have just, you know put your head in the sand before you got you know it's like fuck involved. dude i should have done this before your character arc now it's fucked up and i can't do anything <laughs> about it and then uh while he's talking nick cage pulls out his 50th cigarette of the movie and <laughs> is just pacing around looking freaked out like he generally looks like he's about to have a panic attack which is which is art which is pretty good actually for him this is nick cage's <laughs> face yes he kind of yeah. got he like bug eyes <laughs> yeah that's that's fair um <laughs> yeah it's like every scene it's like either he's like the worst actor on earth or is like oh he's actually pretty good in this like there's no in between really and so lieutenant dan is trying to bribe him now he's like okay what about two hundred fifty thousand? no no, no what about five hundred thousand? 
oh 750 he just eventually gets to a million and nick cage just goes dead silent he's just like looking around with his big bug eyes <laughs> just wondering what to do and then um i think that this was another scene that just went on and that was just, just like one shot for no reason um they pan up the stairs it's and they art see, you don't uh, understand <laughs> yeah he, he says uh he says well, what about lincoln he he's a witness you know he can corroborate the story nah. yeah then it it pans up the stairs and it's like oh they've been sitting there for 20 minutes just waiting for you to finish yeah even even though nick cage was facing that way the whole time he somehow just didn't notice them standing there he was engrossed in the drama because that was his best friend his best friend have we mentioned that at all that they were best friends (laughs) i think yeah because they say it like four times yeah i think at the very beginning it was like oh, oh yeah yeah we, we did yeah yeah because he talked about how he's the best dude on earth yeah exactly like they've been like buddies forever and that's ba- pretty much why dan doesn't kill him ever um but yeah you find out the boxers on his side they drag him out into an alleyway and this is a wonderful nick cage scene as well this is when he's like bringing it back a little bit with the yeah. boxers just beating the absolute fuck out of him and he's like oh come on that's the best you got and just like these <laughs> typical nicholas cage mannerisms he's just like jerking around and just fucking with them and you're like, like yeah, yeah he calls him girly he's like what you got girly <laughs> come on girly man like, it's such a wonderful beat down it is really if you watch one scene of this movie watch like the last well the first 20 the first so. 15 minutes and the last 15 minutes or the, that you know minute and a half or whatever where he's getting his ass beat that's when it's perfect actually that's a good point because if you just take that first minutes and show when she got shot and then show the last 15 minutes it'd still be as cohesive as it was anyway <laughs> <laughs> so it'd pretty much be perfect it'd be, like be a, a more interesting movie it's like yeah a... he's a shitty dirty beat cop and then he <laughs> gets his ass kicked for it it's like okay <laughs> I, I do my think mind could... fills in the blanks <laughs> exactly you could edit this down into like a really solid 30 minute short film <laughs> and it, it might be passable because that's about the length of time of you know Nicolas Cage's good scenes but uh <laughs> but yeah um, the, uh, then Dan comes over he gets like the final blow punches him into the bags of trash he's like you're, you're my best friend man you were my brother me, I'd kill you I loved you you're my brother <laughs> and Nicolas Cage hates trash it's rough and coarse and irritating uh, <laughs> kind of oh, like yeah. this movie <laughs> <laughs> and then like after he's knocked out you just get you get like another weird pov sega cd shot of nick cage coming out of the trash and um so he's like walking out and they just fucking leave him there for some reason as if he's not going to do anything else um mm-hmm. and he's going back towards the safe room and you're like oh yeah spy kid's mom exists and Lieutenant Dan is just like creeping around like Michael Myers, just kind of following him. <laughs> and, and Nick Cage is like, and, since he's fucked up, he keeps trying to call out to her. He's like, Julia! Julia! Oh, yeah. Julia! And, and there's a thunderstorm going on during this. Oh, yeah, it's brewing. It's a brewing. <laughs> it's a brewing. <laughs> well, that actually is important because as Lieutenant Dan is following him, you know, the lightning flashes. And, and you see his, that's how Nick Cage first notices that he's being followed is, you know, he sees his, the shadow that the lightning creates on the wall in front of him. It, he ended to see it the second time though. I know, did you guys see that? Like it flashed in front of him once and he just didn't notice. Like, and then it had to do it again. Like God was like, Hey, pay attention. Just I did notice moment, that actually. Man. I thought he was going to do something and then he didn't. I was like, Oh yeah. I, I <laughs> thought, I thought he was like, I thought he knew and he was going to like pull a fast one on him somehow, but no, he just didn't notice that he was being followed which i guess is kind of i guess it's just kind of realistic actually like he didn't even notice the first one he's so fucked up (laughs) which i don't want to really you know give any credit to this at all but (laughs) but that was that was cool and then so like they're all screaming at each other all right i got her name's lydia What was and, it? It's Julia. Oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I could be wrong. It's Spy Kids moms. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, the second that we saw that she was in Spy Kids, we were like, "Fuck this character's name." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like five minutes in, I like I thought she was looked really familiar. I was like, "Is she from Spy Kids?" And then all of us just <laughs> erect immediately. Yeah. The movie lost any hope of being taken seriously at that okay. point. And Harlan. 
I'm, yes. I'm counting on you for this. I don't know why the fuck this happened. So at this scene, you know, the climax here, Lieutenant Dan's coming in. He's got the lightning, creepy Vincent Price shadows going on. And he's trying to get Spy Kid's mom out of the safe room. Everyone, they, Dan knows exactly where she is. You know, he's going to win. Everything looks, you know, it's the like perfect the for him. It's, yeah, exactly. The and then just hour. all of a fucking sudden, a police van with two officers busts in right where they're at and saves the day for seemingly no reason. And Nick Cage is like, yeah, fuck you, man. You're going down now. Like these police guys were like with him this, the whole time or something. Do any of you have any idea why the fuck that happened? That was weird to me because, like, if this guy's supposed to be a decorated officer or de- decorated, like, military personnel, and then these guys are just like, drop the fucking gun, buddy! And he look, Lieutenant Dan looks at Nick Cage. He's like, yo, like, t- tell him I'm with you. I'm your bud. Nick Cage's like, no. <laughs> you so, piece of shit. <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, and, so no one caught it. It just no. happened. Well, no, what made it more confusing was uh, a, a crucial element that you forgot. Oh. Is uh, before that, I they, never do they that. established the, like... So there's, like, there's like a, uh, uh, an anchor woman outside, like, covering the, the hurricane. And, like, there's part of the building, like, this big sphere has, like, fallen on the ground. And I, I, guess, I guess the storm knocked it over. Okay. Um, and it's like, it seems to be like, you know, still connected to some electrical shit and it's like, you know, randomly spurting off, you know, little, little shots of lightning and shit. Uh, and, and so like, I'm fully expecting like that to play into our, our villain's demise at some point, but it just kind of doesn't happen. And at some point, like some like sphere or a spear, excuse me, type thing, like just, just fucking decimates the wall of the panic room that Spy Kid's mom is hiding in. And I'm not sure what the point of that was. Uh, but, yeah, um, the, the, the police start pulling up. And, and the, the news people will get the fuck out of there. And Nick Cage, like, sees them on a TV that's there for some reason. And so he knows that the police are coming. And he, but he can't see the ball. I don't know how he knew the ball was there. And I don't know what, how, how, what, what the ball has to do with anything. Like... I'm so fucking confused. <laughs> I don't know, but it was just um, to show the severity of the weather. I guess I don't know. It, it really seemed like they were setting up like a whole fucking uh, fucking Rube Goldberg yeah. machine yeah. type trap for him. It's you know? just really weird. It's like okay, the bad guy's about to win. I actually forgot to write why he's not going to win. We're just gonna have a police van just wreck into the warehouse, and <laughs> yeah, I, and that'll be the I, end of it. I I guess I I. I, my best guess is that the the big spear thing was rolling, like the wind was rolling it down the street, and the police were like, "Whoa!" and they just drove into the wall at the precise moment. Like the timing of it was so annoyingly convenient for Nick Cage. It was like right when he opened the door, the police busted through this wall. And, I, and again, I guess he saw it on the TV that was like monitoring what was outside. That's really convenient that that was happening and that, that was there for him to use, but whatever. Um, but my favorite part was, you know, before all this happens, you know, uh, Lieutenant Dan is still trying to convince him one last time to just take the goddamn money. And he looks at the ground and he sees a dollar bill covered in blood. Real subtle, real subtle metaphor there. <laughs> um, and he's like, no. And Lieutenant Dan's like, you got nothing, Nick Cage. Snake eyes, and we were all like, "Whoa!" Whoa. He said the thing. <laughs> and then, and then afterwards, when the cops show up, and <laughs> apparently Dan the is... cops were tipped off by uh, by Nick Cage. By the way, oh, you, I don't know when had, he did you that. You had to look that up. I don't know when he did that. That's okay. the sad thing. When did he do that? But let's not forget. Okay, so the cops show up. It pays off, because they planted that seed at some point. He tipped them off. Okay, sure, whatever. They show up, and Lieutenant Dan is begging him. He's like, tell him tell him we're home. He's telling him we're cool. And he says, snake eyes. <laughs> yeah, two title <laughs> drops in like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was like, why'd you have to do it twice? Like, Okay, so even if the police were tipped off, so the reporter was outside right where all this was happening, covering a hurricane. She sees the police coming up. 
the police swerve to avoid whatever the sphere thing that fell down, but they just so happen to crash into the warehouse exactly where they were, and they're like, oh, we're coming here for this anyway. Sweet, we got them. <laughs> yeah, it was and like, if it had been like... So if it had been like telling me that that's what happened? Yeah, it, it, A, it all just happened too fast. You know, like, I couldn't tell what happened because of all the cuts. And, and B, it was just so from what I understand that did happen, it was just so annoyingly convenient. Like, if that had happened, like, five seconds later, if that, you know, security monitor hadn't been there at the perfect point of view for Nick Cage to see it, he wouldn't have known when to time his shit, you know? And, and that's just, he was in on it, but the police weren't in on it. Like, they just happened to crash right where he wanted them to. That's nice. Well, guys, would you believe that this masterpiece debuted in theaters at number two behind saving private ryan yeah i would actually it's the only movie with the balls to compete against saving private ryan <laughs> it beat out a halloween h2o 20 years later or h20 so, like, so number wow. two is not a very high spot that year huh yeah low bar well, well it was that weekend the opening uh, weekend gotcha. it was debuting behind saving private ryan gotcha gotcha well, this movie um Justin, I think I think you said you hadn't seen it. I don't know about U.S., but this movie reminds me of a of another one that came out. I think around like two thousand eight, Vantage Point. Um, it's in like so that movie's gimmick is that like you you see the same thing from different people's vantage point, and you <laughs> kind of piece together the mystery of what's going on. And this movie kind of has that same gimmick at points, but then kind of abandons it. It's another. It's just another reason why this movie is just kind of like a little confusing at times, and and it feels. It feels half-hearted, and it feels like it wasn't thought through. Yeah, it's like, it didn't really know what it wanted to be. Um, just with the script, with Nicolas Cage's acting, and with the cinematography changes, it's like almost three different movies happening at once, and maybe that's the point? Maybe maybe it's too smart for us, as the other three movies we've watched. I felt like it should have just, with, with the cinematography and with Nick Cage, I mean, Nick Cage wasn't, I guess quite the joke that he is now obviously but i feel like this should have just been like a silly action movie and it it was trying not to be that at points and that didn't make sense to me this movie's totally trying to be like die hard you know that's not like die Die hard's fun this is boring (laughs) that might be his prop main problem is just trying so hard to be so many different things it just totally lost any kind of cohesiveness or identity whatsoever it has like a too many cooks kind of feel to it. I mean, I don't know the production sure. story behind this, but it it feels like there was a tug of war of like different uh, tonal visions between people. Maybe it was the studio and De Palma. I mean, I don't know. Agreed. Exactly. And um, so after that, that <laughs> whatever the fuck ending that was, he's it shows him like later on. It's like he's accepting an award. Like he's the best guy on earth. Like he's never. Oh done yeah. Wrong. <laughs> I forgot about it's that. It's like they have a gathering of like two hundred cops, and they have like a ceremony for him, and he's just like hero of the day. And yeah, that's he where he goes like, back he... to like douchey Nick Cage because he's like, "Fuck yeah, bro!" Like holding his certificate. Yeah, exactly. he holds it up in the air, and he's like, "Fuck yeah, I'm a yeah. hero." And it's like, dude, you're not fucking redeemed. Like, you're still a fucking corrupt cop who's killed people. Like, exactly. Or if not killed someone directly, definitely, definitely indirectly. And like they, yeah. they said, some. yeah, <laughs> they said in the movies, like, oh yeah, those those money drops from the senator every week, huh? What about that? Like that kind of shit. He's just a he's just a piece of shit. He's and like, after well, the well, award well, ceremony, well, it shows different him different because I don't have to look at it. <laughs> after that it shows him with his family and shit and you're like oh yeah he has a wife and son forgot about that and then i guess the so did he but i get yeah i guess brian de palma did too because after that it shows him simping over spy kids mom and they were like oh shit we forgot he had a wife and so he's like oh yeah she just left and then they kissed and then the movie ended (laughs) yeah it was really weird and then the end credits are just like some dudes that were standing behind them like building something like a building <laughs> yeah that that's that <laughs> like, was a weird why? part too you know how like it's usually like a couple minutes of something like that then the rest is just like black and white credits the entire credits of this movie were just construction workers like building a wall for god knows what fucking reason they're ahead of their time build a wall <laughs> i guess 
it's ridiculous. But so, all that being said, out of ten, what do you boys give it? Four. Uh, like the most boring type of four that I can give it. Yeah, four, I guess. I really want to give it a five because all the Nick Cage scenes are very Nick Cage worthy, but I don't think that's enough to boil it out of subpar territory. If we're calling five like a perfect average of a movie, like just being mediocre, then mm-hmm. I'd give it a four as well. <laughs> like if it, if the entire thing followed the train of the first fifteen minutes, I'd give it like a six or seven. But as it is right now, it's a four. Oh, if if it followed the train of the first ten minutes, I'd give this movie a ten. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, watch the first fifteen minutes of this movie, and then the the center to get shot, then just shut it off. Just pretend like okay, Nick Nick Cage's night's ruined. He yeah, went that's home. it. He just he went home. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he testifies. And He's that's like, it. oh man, I He's lost. Like, yeah, I lost my fucking money. That would actually be more interesting. Yeah, that'll be the best viewing of this movie. And um, so this is normally where we would insert the f bomb, but two things we had about that. We did, did we? Because I yeah, was going to yeah. say this was our first R-rated film, and I don't remember them saying fuck one time. There was a they... single fuck. Yes. There was a fuck. Mm-hmm. Where was it? Nick Cage at one point just says, "Well, fuck you." And I think he says it to Lieutenant Dan. Okay, so even if that was it, so I guess that was the f bomb of the movie. Why was it? Why was it rated R? I thought this yes. was a PG thirteen. I'm no, surprised if, this if is an there R. was one yeah. fuck in it. There's not even really that much blood or violence at all. Not there's not. Really. There's I... no reason, especially in '98, why this should have been rated R. I can't think of anything. I didn't like, even remember that he said fuck once. They have like a couple, like sexual innuendos. But even like still. there's the part where he, uh, the one guy's like my like my wife likes to talk during sex. Last night she called me from the hotel. Like, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then there's the part where Spy Kids movie. mom is supposed to give head to the grandma's boy era Jonah Hill looking guy. But it's still all innuendo. They there's not even any tits in the movie. So uh, yeah, there's nothing explicit. That's just another thing that just doesn't make sense about it. It's like a PG thirteen movie that's rated R for some reason. Yeah, this is like, like the you know weakest what? You R I've ever seen. Money. Yeah. Very tame. Yeah, so 4 out of 10. Nothing special. Had Definitely had potential. Could have been alright, but it was just just another Me. another bad like, movie. Yeah, like the, the word that I that I took away from this movie was just unremarkable. Like, I don't, I don't really have too much to say about it. I don't know. It was, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was messy and, you know, kind of obnoxious at times, but it wasn't offensive, you know. It was just kind of generally annoying. Yeah. 98 minutes of my quarantine wasted. <laughs> and so, <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us up to what are we watching next week? Next week, we are watching the 2003 classic from Robert Rodriguez, Spy Kids 3. Oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> coming back around again. <laughs> you see how we fucking tied it together? Oh, God. <laughs> by very not subtle foreshadowing, and it'll be hosted by me. All right, so that's it for this week's B roll, boys. And we'll see you next week and talk about Spy Kids 3. See you next week. See you next week. Woo! Boy!